Ooh, sorry, had to run back up the stairs. All right, where are we at? So, Trap Clem. Um, so just a reminder of how this works, as Clem is in the top right of Glitter and Ashes, and Trap is in the lower left. So how this works is that this is still a two-game series. Each team still has two lives. So this is just like any other match uh, that we've seen so far. If you get a 2-0, the other team will lose a life, and the winner of this will stay on without losing a life. If this goes 1-1, both teams will lose a life, and they both get put down to their final life. Now, on that final life, you can revive a player. If you revive a player, it can be Clem and it can be Trap. So it's very possible this kind of becomes a Clem versus Trap-like extended series. Um, we saw this with Lambo and uh, Trap last season in the Shopify Rebellion versus the... Um, the, uh, the Shopify Rebellion was versus the Afrika Freaks back then, where they played, uh, where Lambo and Trap essentially played like a best of seven. And the way that worked was basically that uh, because Lambo won 2-0 initially, he took the last, you know, he put their opponent team onto the last life, then Trap won 2-0, he put the Shopify into the last life, but then Lambo won 2-0 to eliminate the last life of the Freaks, and then preserve the last life of the Rebellion. And this would be the same situation here. So the one thing that's worth noting is that when you go down to your last life, if they're both, if both teams are on their last life at the same time, it can go 1-1, and then you have an ultimate best of one ace match. I know. How wild. We'll talk more about that if it becomes a possibility. For now, Clem versus Trap, two lives left for each of the teams, and obviously basically looking for a chance to start closing this series out and move on through to the next round of the playoffs. That's where we stand right now. That's what we are setting up for. As we get into this map number one of the two games that these two will play, guaranteed at least at the moment. So as going to see our Warpgate coming up from Trap and a factory on the way from Clem. Pretty standard expansion so far. You can see this probe has been kind of lingering around. It's trying to pick up some further info, so it's just kind of moving back and forth here. Try and see what's going on. As we do have our Twilight Council about halfway done. Nexus will be finishing soon as well, and that Warpgate... Also still just being brought up into play, also not far from finishing. So Adept will continue on its journey to the upper right hand side probe, out on the far right and the Adept will continue through here. And just looking for some early game information and some damage potentially gets an SCV but three Marines and that Adept has shaded in. It's dead, especially with the Hellion showing up. Can we save that Marine? Yes, we can. So Clem even getting an extra save compared to what I was expecting out of this. So that's a nice little something. A nice little bonus there for sure as we uh, get back online. Just going to be seeing our adept into the center, Hellion around that right-hand side trying to fight a little bit as well. It really just wants to get across the map and try and pick up info, but Trap knows where it is, and he knows how to try and deny that information. And Stalker out of the front here to basically do just this, get as much damage onto it as possible, and deny it getting past the wall. Of course, you already see the wall off, so you see the robo and the gateway if you click on those, and you do know that that is a thing. See so your scout in there still reasonable. I'm going to see our Nexus down on the bottom side on that third base. It's coming online. The Raven and a couple of additional barracks building from Clem as well. Just getting that online and obviously heading into his mid-game stages now. Raven, very useful for the mid-game, of course. No surprises about that. Um, it's seen in a lot of the PvT matchups, and especially when your opponent doesn't open Stargate, it's pretty much always worth going into. You'll find some kind of use for it. As that Stalker is dead because there's no blink just yet. He unburrows and reburrows this initial mine, though, and... That will keep the probes from coming back in for just a little while longer. Now you can see that the uh, medevac is going to pull back up to the upper right side of the map. So it's going to be pulling away here as well. And yeah, it's just going to be falling back towards the natural expansion here. Falling home for the moment. And then going from there. Stalkers continuing up the right side. Temple Archive is going to drop down into that natural expansion as well. So also getting this set up. And just going to be seeing our engineering bay, refinery, stem and combat shield, all the usual th bits and pieces continue to come into play right now as our temple archives will not be too far from finishing. Our marines settle down off on the right, 
And just going to see a reactor dropping down on the starport. Stalkers come in, and they're going to go for a siege tank kill at the front. Only costs you one stalker, so not too bad at all. You take those, absolutely. Just going to see charge still on the way up. Storm is on the way up as well. It's going to get Corona boosted out. It's again, that Storm Corona boosting on the Templar archives. of extra high Templar just down on the bottom side on the 6 o'clock base. Obviously getting that energy building up. Going to have to be careful then with the Raven. Need to babysit that against the potential feedbacks as well. That's obviously something you would like to avoid. Keeping your Raven alive is generally advised as unfortunately it's uh, not, not an easy thing to do with feedbacks in play. So uh, yeah. Well, he is going to come in drop another order turret here. It's currently just chilling in that bottom left corner. Surprised we don't see like a high templar a little bit closer, a little bit, you know, nearer just to try and drop that feedback. But I guess then it would just go the other way. Wants to keep the high templar on the front line to deal with this first push. This first push, that's 48 to 21 army supply, by the way. Trap has got an immortal in production that's not out on the map just yet either. And I feel like this is quite concerning at the moment. I of course coming through. Oh, oh, massive storm. That is uh, a big storm. And that's exactly what you need there as trap. If you don't get a storm like that, you're actually in a lot of trouble here, I think, because the army supply is so heavily in Clem's favor. Without that storm, trap might just be dead. Uh, quite frankly, as the wooden lines are going to head toward the main base now. So they're going to make their way along towards the main. Actually going to go into the natural to start picking off these rocks. What am I saying? Up and borrowing, reborrowing. It's relocating a little bit. These probes coming back in. Gotta be careful about that. Stalker's gonna go down against double Stalker kill. Probably the best value you can get out of those mines rather than a single probe each. Well, Clem's still being the aggressive player, still kind of sitting on the front lines. Of course, still difficult to move in a range. When those storms are in play, Trap is being kept from taking a third, by the way. So, uh, sorry, a fourth base. So not uh, going into a fourth base super quickly. Uh, a, a factor for sure is he's actually going to come and drop on top. Oh my goodness, he's just going to go for the whole army here. He's going to get the High Templar. Units are still unloading. And now the two Immortals and the Archons are separated from anything else. No reinforcements available. What a play from Clem. Diving on this army. And he's going to clean it up. Clem, massive pickoffs here. A storm available on this high Templars. Clem pre-splits and readies himself for the next part of this fight. The Archon's trying to come back in. Clem's reinforcements are on their way across. The Archon now is going to get caught. The Oh, the uh, Prism comes in to save it. Well, go Prism. Saving the Archon's life right there because it was about to get sandwiched. It's just going to be seeing the Bio Force going to lift up into these Medivacs and they are going to go dropping into the main base here as well. So bringing those up into the main and Clem now just going everywhere, abusing the immobility of these high Templar a little bit. Obviously, Prism trying to relocate them a little bit. We've got those Wooden Mines on that right-hand side. They're going to be big if they could get a connection off. They do okay. Clem is going to be forced to lift up and back away, but he is keeping up the pressure right now. Absolutely doing a good job of uh, staying active in this game and uh, yeah, making this so that Trap is going to struggle to kind of solidify a little bit. Clem is uh, now being held off a little bit at least, so a little bit of slowdown happening. Ghost Academy still coming online over in the main base. And this army of trap is getting pushed for, or is pushing further back on the left. Going to come through for a couple of marauders now. He's going to chase those away. Those do get uh, chased up the left-hand side. Raven's still trying to find some value. You can see the High Templar coming in to look for that feedback as well. Cannot quite find it, unfortunately. And a little run by attempt once again here is not going to be too successful, so that's going to be held off. And still just getting a couple of, uh, well, getting our robot facility set up. Basically, stalkers are setting up, and Nexus on the fourth base as well. So getting that ready to go. A couple of ghosts, a few of them continuing out as well. So three ghosts currently on the way out. And as we continue in with our robot bay and robot facility, they really will be finishing very soon here. So that's going to be Traps Tech Switch underway. He weathered the storm with storms. He uh, really did uh, manage to hold on against that aggression of Clem, which was really ramping up at points as well. You know, it was getting dangerous, no? Like, it looked very scary at uh, points in time, so it was good to see him 
be able to hold from that because that's very easily a situation that you can uh, fall apart in, right? That's very easily a situation where it just doesn't go your way and you, you can kind of just start losing everything. The drop in the main base does too much. Trap was just about able to keep on top of it and I do think that's a, a pretty big factor in his chances of this game because now Clem had to slow down and gave Ch Trap a chance to maybe set up towards something of a uh, you know a rebuild. We actually do see another counterattack of Trap moving in towards the natural expansion of Clem. So that moves in right now. And Clem will have to deal with this. He's actually going to pull his whole army back from the middle of the map. So he's not going to be able to do something with the current army supply lead as he gets pushed away there. And again, just kind of credit to Trap for finding this aggression that is having so much success on the other side. But you do break into a fight over here. First Storm goes down. 14 SCVs died for Clem. Next Storm will hold him from coming up this ramp. Trap is once again, though, in a position where he is trailing. Quite a lot of supply. I mean, I'm worried about him. He's only been on. He's killed 14 SCVs, and yet he was he's still only equal on workers. So he's not exactly being great. These Zells come in. Uh, Widowmine goes off, and those Zells get cleaned out pretty much straight away. Yes, coming out the front. Widowmine gets taken down. A few Zells, a couple of Disruptors continuing out as well. You're just going to see these Stalkers showing up, and you're going to see these couple of Disruptor shots coming through. Big Disruptor shots to start with. Clem, not ready to deal with Disruptors at all. Moving forward now, looking for some EMPs. Storms around the left-hand side. The EMPs were really good, though, and Clem's now going to collapse on the rest of this army. It melts so quickly when those EMPs have dropped off, and the Disruptors can't really fight for themselves. Another Storm coming down, but Clem has dodged it expertly, and he is going hunting for... Oh, he's going to find the prison with all the High Templar inside. What a pickoff for Clem. As he gets rid of the prism, gets rid of the opportunities, and Trap is in a world of trouble as Clem keeps on hounding at the front door and is not letting up just yet. Oh, Trap is, I mean, that's obviously a bit of panic in general, right? The fact he's like bringing his prism back with an F2, that's obviously pretty uh, noteworthy there. Alright, well, Bio coming down over here, a couple of cannon shots, a couple of Marines taking some damage. The man just going off. Five more probes continuing through and just going to be seen. I mean, Trap has got a good amount of uh, splash damage back up again. That disrupt account is back and all the rest of it. So, again, this back online. Disrupt a shot here will just clean up a widow mine. It does just mean that it's difficult for Clem to really come through and try and put an end to this game. So, Clem can't really close this out just yet as another disrupt a shot is not quite going to connect. Two shots still going off. Couple of zealots are uh, moving back as well. Just going to be seeing the Bioforce continue to fight. A storm goes down. The Archon should die here, right? He should be able to just target that down. He's just going to back away and lift up. He actually does kill the Archon before he leaves, though. So Archon falls, and Clem going to try and drop into the main. Still maintaining that 40-ish supply lead. That was 30 to 40 supplies What he's been ahead most of the game. Going to dive that right side now. There's a couple of time pillar left over here, and the first storm is great. The next one is... Decent. Obviously, Clem moved back away from the majority of it. Now eats an EMP. Uh, feedback, sorry. So loses an EMP on one of his ghosts as he kills off this battery. And he will continue to pick away at the Archon there. That was more than in just next to it. Looking for this pile as the couple Vikings will land also. One of those Vikings gets lifted up and saved. And as Clem pulls it back just a little bit. You can get the snipes on those High Templar. No, morphs into the Archon to save. Man, the micro between these two has been fascinating. Absolutely just... Uh, can't take your eyes off the screen action as uh, any single moment has has the potential to be a high quality play right now it seems this medevac of units is gonna go down clem change directions he doesn't do anything with it he drops the raven order turrets in again it's been going all game long 14 kills on the raven throughout as he finds an escape plan up the left side with these medevacs and he will get some stalkers. because he will get the nexus here and that's the fifth base of trap denied as his own fifth base is moving forward he's gonna take the forward third uh the forward fifth base in the middle of the map, so if he's keeping the pressure up like this, that doesn't matter, and he can obviously rally from that point forward more easily, but it is a little bit of a risk as well, because obviously Trap counterattacks into that position much more quickly than some of the other fifth bases as well. Stalker's coming around the right, a Viking is going to get picked off, the Bio Army comes back through, and a couple of libs setting up here, just going to keep these Zealots zoned out.
Disruptor shot still flying as we do see this army of Clam is going to make it down the other side. Trap is going to engage in the base trade. He's happy to go across the map and go for some of the bases of Clem himself. I wonder what Trap has overall defensively right now. Would be surprised if we don't get some picture in picture of this base trade. WTL production team, step it up! This is your time. Medivac's going to lift up and they're going to back away into the main. They're going to unload over there as Clem is still pushing through on the other side of the map. We're running straight in. He's going to find this disruptor as it spawns. He will get it. Trap is not paying enough attention to save that at all, so that's an easy pick for Clem. Couple of lip siege, you know, there's the picture in pictures. You can watch the attempted defense on the other side of the map from Clem in the bottom right corner of the screen. A couple of libs of Clem now in that bottom right corner as well, relocating as he is going to move up into the main trap. Knows he doesn't have the better end of this base trade. It was very much a do whatever you can base trade because he's got too much control of the game otherwise. And Clem gets map one off of trap. Big first win for Clem in the World Team League Winter. The playoff round one. Get those. Get that hype rolling, readying up for Trap Clem here in the World Team League Playoffs. Bottom left-hand side, it is our Blue Protoss player from the Krong... Uh, I can't remember the new name of the team, it's the... It's Trap from KDF, the Freaks. The, uh, the, the thingy Freak. <laughs> God damn it. The, uh, why does it say Freaks everywhere? Oh my god, it's Kwangdong Freaks. There we go. I couldn't remember what exactly <laughs> what vowels I needed to use. I knew it was the something dongs. I thought it was like the Kwangdongs. The Kwangdong Freaks. Sorry, i uh not familiar with the team name 100% still. I'm, I'm like looking on Liquipedia. I open the Liquipedia page and the Liquipedia page is just called Freaks. I'm like, that doesn't help me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Apologies, my friends. And apology, uh, Kwangdong Freaks for massacring your... Uh, your sponsorship name. I, uh, I, <laughs> I am sorry. Um, Clem Trap, map number two. So again, uh, Team Liquid's Clem in the top right. Probably got intro while I was having this uh, nightmare of an introduction. Obviously, uh, what this means, guys, is that Trap is going to lose a life for the Freaks no matter what. So the Freaks will be on their last life. But before that happens, Trap gets his chance to take a life off of Liquid now with this map. If that happens, both teams would be able to use their revive to bring Clem and Trap back. But obviously, if Clem can get a 2-0, it means that the next series must be a 2-0 from the Freaks. So then you must only you only need one map at that point as Liquid if you get a 2-0 now. So it's a it's a big game, guys. So much on the line here in the playoffs. Let's see if he's going around. Command center dropping down on the natural. And just going to be seeing our cyber goal. Going to be finishing up back at home. Bringing that online in the next few moments. And yeah, just going to be seeing our, again, factory on the way up in the main base as well. So bringing that online. It's going to be coming through there without too many issues. Factory coming up, reactor and a bunker coming down. Uh, warp gate is coming in from trap as well. So let's just bring that up. The Nexus on the way through. Everything pretty standard. He's going to go straight to the Twilight Council and play from there. Stalker is uh, going to be rallying out. Starport coming through. Refinery going to be finishing up shortly. And just going to be seeing a... Well, still a probe just patrolling around the front. A few Marines just pressing forward. The Adept around that left-hand side. And uh, just going to be seeing... The Warp Gate going to be finishing shortly. Blink still coming in. A couple of probies on the way out. A gateway coming through as well. Again, a lot of setup at the moment here. At the uh, at the start of this uh, second map, climb with the medevac and Hellion production. He's going to be setting up for some fairly early pressure of his own, I would imagine. Get across the map, try and drop some Hellions in. Try and get something done in the early stages. There is currently a blind spot across the edge of the main base of traps. So that is a location you can unload those Hellions in. And then run in with all of them unloaded all at once. The dev doesn't commit to the shade, so it doesn't pick up the info there. As it will be a third Hellion popping out. 
this is the the downside of only having a uh, you know not proxying the starport. Usually with the proxy starport build, you get four Hellions. Now you're only going to have three, which means that once you lose one of those Hellions, you immediately lose all of your one-shot potential on uh, workers. Now this Adept gets into the base. Clem might not mind that because it means the Adept isn't back at home helping to defend. I mean, obviously, it wasn't back at home before anyway, but now he's guaranteed a kill on it. He will only lose one SCV. Uh, I wonder how much he's... Uh, I wonder if that's okay for him. The medevac drop is taking a very long route across the map, by the way, to the very far top left corner, and he's actually just going to sit there for the moment. He's afraid of stalkers going to hunt for it, and he's going to wait for the stalkers to be out on the map before he commits with the drop, so he's not looking to rush the damage here. He's happy for the damage to come in at just a little bit of a, a, a later point, how very interesting. Definitely a, a cool little factor, I'd imagine, then. I was going to see our Marines and our Raven hanging out. The few Stalkers will be hanging around as well. Medivac still in the top left. It's so interesting to see someone just really save that Medivac. Right, to, to not go for the Hellion drop already, he must really believe that Trap knows what's going on, right? That he's aware of what's happening and that he really thought that these Stalkers were going to be hunting this Medivac down. He's going to bring it across now. There is an Observer at this stage though, right? Up and left of the base of Trap, so you'll have a bit of pre-warning about this. There's a wall off here. I can't imagine this does damage now, right? This Clam is going to go boosting through. Let's see if he can find any probes. Let's see if he can find the damage he's looking for. With this Hellion unload, I mean, Trap doesn't respond at all, so Trap had the info, didn't get it. Oh, their probes are still lined up, seven workers down already. It's going to be nine, he recalls to the main base, but the Hellions are going to run into the natural, where they're going to keep on chasing probes that are lined up. Good blink, going to block the Hellions there, but we lift up, all three are alive, and Clam has evacuated them out. We've already seen the probes on the third base pull away as well, terrified of, you know, this going wrong. Oh, trap. Everything is falling apart right now. This is not looking pretty at all. 13 dead probes, and it does feel as though Trap is in a world of trouble as Clem does some serious early game damage. The Hellions are still a threat, so Trap has to keep something at home to keep that in mind as well. You've got to, you know, be aware of that. My goodness, what a, uh, what a start of this game for Clem. I was, you know, I could understand the idea behind what he was doing by keeping the, uh, Medivac back for a long time, but I was starting to get skeptical it had been too long and all the rest of it, but not the case. I'm pushing right now with the Raven in play. He's got, obviously, the usage on that to still bring into action as well. Tank to set up. We will have a Zealot counterattack coming in from Trap across the map. Clem will have to deal with this while setting up for this fight, but the super battery is already popped. That's way too early of a super battery trap. That is way too early, way earlier than you really need. Oh, good hold position on the SCVs there as we do come through. Auto turrets coming down to try and help out with this as well. Obviously, these Zelds coming forward. A lot of these units just stood here and fighting, not kiting back at all, which you would usually expect. Okay, Clem is now going to get pushed back. Good hold from Trap. Credit to him because I did not think this was looking pretty for him in the slightest. I thought this was really bad for him, in fact. But yeah, he's able to make something of this for the moment. And uh, Aliens do come back in for a few probes. Obviously got a few SCVs across the map, but he is down on workers overall. So Clem is in a better worker position. 17 probes killed to the six SCVs. Much better for Clem, who has a third CC finished up in position now, morphing into an orbital already. So that's coming through as well. And this couple of medevacs will move out and join up with everything else. The prism is going to go moving around the top side. As you can see, a couple of these are still getting picked away at, so this prism not doing too much else at the moment. I was actually going to get chased down by these couple of marines. Just about surviving. We do actually have Trap getting ready for an attack in on the right, perhaps. And at least a little bit of pressure on over there. And it's a little bit of fun. Clem chases forward, but with the Zealots there, it's just a little bit too difficult to really move through and do too much. We've got Widow Mines to help out, however. One of them firing and connecting. I can't believe this Prism's still alive. Very low HP. Just about managing to, to stick around in this game. Definitely a factor. And if boost out to the bottom right-hand corner, so they're going to go escaping away and just going to be seeing our fire force otherwise sitting out on the third base. 
Extra Zealous coming through here. The Army of Supply of Clem consistently in that lead. And uh, very similar to the last game in that regard. But I do feel like Trap was in a, a lot more trouble previously. I do feel like he's kept himself alive and brought himself back a little bit right now. So, credit to Trap, getting done what he needed to. Keeping his team's chances alive. This is awkward, though. Trap will have a run into Clem's third. Obviously, Clem is going to have a run into Trap's third base as well. Clem is actually going to decide to come back and defend this. He'd rather defend. He probably likes this fight, right? I mean, he's going to have a surround with his reinforcements. The Zealots are all split up already. I don't really like this fight for Trap. I mean, he's going to get seven SCVs, but it comes at a pretty high cost. It comes at a really high cost. These few Zealots still running forward. They're going to get cleaned out as well, so they get picked off without... Too much issue. Oh my god, Trap just lost his entire army and really killed seven SCVs and about nothing else. That is, um... That is really something, huh? Clem is surely just gonna walk across the map now, knowing that he turned around and cleaned this army up. He can come across the map and... Well, it's down to the Disruptors that are in production at the moment. If Disruptors can get out here, Disruptors can be a game changer. We've got the uh, Raven looking around for some potential damage as well, so it's hunting for a chance to make something happen too. All the turrets going down, one on the main base, one thinking about maybe coming more towards the natural here. Gonna die for the disruptors. Oh my goodness, he went for the one further back there initially, and that was not the one that was uh, very close to connecting. I was like, oh my god, what are we doing? What's happening? That got a little bit crazy. Almost too crazy for me, but it survives for the moment. We're gonna see the biofors. Oh god, I ran out of space to run there for a moment. There's multiple disruptors on this natural, however, the Robo is there as well, and Clem knows that he will go for try and clean that out. Trap is counterattacking as well as Clem kills one of the two Robos, the disruptors firing again, and Trap just doing what he can to buy time at the front. He is actually backing away from Clem's third base, so he's going to be moving forward himself now and actually coming back to clean this out. And he's bringing a few units back to kind of uh, help as well. He had a few units running forward at least. He's going to turn onto those first few Zealots, however, lift up and get out of there. Knowing that this army is coming, Clem is out of there already. I got to say, I do think Clem is playing some really good SE2 at the moment, guys. I remember before they brought Clem out, we were like, oh, is Clem being ill? Some, you know, some people mentioned they couldn't interview him because he was ill, and all of a sudden it was like, oh no, is Clem ill? Is he okay? Well, yeah, if you look at this, he's absolutely freaking fine. In fact, he's wonderful because he is playing some magnificent TVP at the moment. He has just controlled these games. And while it's been a bit of back and forth, I do think that every decision and every moment has more so gone in Clem's favor than Trap's. That's a nice catch from Trap. Obviously getting rid of a few, um, you know, a few units in the medevac there is pretty much the best grab you could get, but that's pretty much the first time I've seen something go well for Trap in a little while. And that's obviously a little bit rough here. 12 minutes in this game. Trap 130 to 190 supply. The order turrets are going to kill the battery, which means they can now start working on probes, and the Raven adds to its kill count once more. Is this deja vu? Didn't we just have the Raven killing a bunch of probes? Oh no, that was game one! Yes, Clem is doing it again. Something else that Trap can't deal with has no way to get that uh, that Raven out of the corner as Liberator production has now started from Clem as well. Continue to get that up and running. Oh my goodness. I think Trap really is just walking into more and more trouble here as time passes by. Clem really does uh, just put himself into a very, very good position. As you're going to see these Stalkers running up this ramp. Viking taking some damage. Liberia sieging up, and the Stalkers will get chased away, will get turned around. Final still out into the center. A few Marines going to peel off to the left-hand side there, go toward the Watchtower. Army in the bottom left is going to get hit by a Disruptor as well. Big Disruptor shot there as Biofor starts coming through. Actually going to get a uh, Disruptor kill? No, not quite. That Disruptor survives. Well, he's... Uh, Ghost will just drop some killing EMPs or some final EMPs, some dying EMPs is what I should have said. Some dying EMPs to just try and get something out of this trade out. And now we're going to see another Robo down. That's the end of the Robos. No, there's one left. Trap did rebuild one elsewhere. So that is in play. But Clam's got control of this natural with Liberators here as well to zone. Uh, Widowmine's going to get a decent shot initially. And I mean, there's just not enough Zealots here. Clam oh, taking damage off the Disruptors though. Couldn't quite get out of reach of those. Just couldn't quite pull himself far enough away from that, unfortunately. Well, he is still trading well in the main base, and he's continuing to work on production as Trap tries to figure out how to move up this ramp. Right now, he just can't. Clem gets another Disruptor as he steps forward into that engagement. Uh, Clem is uh, absolutely looking to take this game down. 
And look, I take the 2-0 and put the Freaks onto their last life, which is, like I say, really big for Liquid. That's what you're looking for. That's that's kind of how you win these series, obviously. <laughs> God, I'm full of crap today, aren't I? Um, but no, he really is giving Liquid the best chance possible because now they only need one map in the next best of two that is played here. They only need one out of the next two maps after this game to win this series, and that's obviously very doable. That feels very possible, right? Clem obviously just all over Trap Song here. It is going to be a GG. Clem is your winner. Against Trap 2 to 0. Revenge from the regular season where Trap 2 zeroed him. There's the full Team Liquid lineup now. As uh, we will have Clem put Liquid into that improved position. Bottom right corner of the map. Our blue Protoss player from the Freaks. This is going to be Trap. Must win 2-0. to zero. In the bottom left, our Red Terran. And this is going to be Clem from Team Liquid. As we get this up and uh, running here. Let's see that probe. Coming out as we go into Blackburn. Obviously, Blackburn is a predetermined map, so no one picks this map. It's just preset in the lineup. But this series will start on Blackburn. Then the loser of this map will get to pick the second map. And as we've mentioned, Clem just needs to win one of these maps. And that's what's dangerous for Trap. Because now if Trap loses both... You know, if he lose, well, if even if Trap wins, sorry, not if Trap loses both, because Trap can't lose both. Because if he loses one, the series is over. But if Trap wins the first one, Clem gets to pick map two, which means that then Clem only needs to win one map. He gets to play his map pick against Trap. The only thing he won't get to pick is Curious Minds. New rule for this uh, season. A new rule for this season is that each team gets one map veto, that can, and that map cannot be picked. I repeat, that map cannot be picked once again by the losers. So it can come up as like a predetermined map to start a, a best of two on, but it can't be picked by the losing player. So you can't pick Curious Minds. So that's a factor for Clem to keep in consideration. He can't pick um, Curious Minds for map two, but he will get something like Berlingrad or so if he does lose this first game. It does come down to that next one. Dev's Corona boosting away, Nexus coming online. And it's just going to be getting ourselves set up here at the moment. I was going to see how our uh, Twilight Council is going to be on the way. Clem just going to play a super greedy 3cc of one gas. So, going to really mix it up a little bit and just say, okay, I'm just going to do what I want to do and, you know, play a bit greedy and. Well, not put pressure on you, but obviously I will get a very good economy to work forward from. So, something to, to look at there. Pulling straight away from Trap. It's not been put off uh, from the drop-heavy play so far. So that drop-heavy play has been pretty, pretty hefty. We've not seen much of it for uh, much to kind of deal with it from Trap from Blink Stalkers. He could have maybe opened Stargate, and that would stop some of the drop heavy play. This map in general shouldn't be as drop heavy. You can kind of push on the front and then drop into the main, but that's pretty much all the drop and you should be able to do. We'll see if Trap can deal with that. I'd imagine that's something you can cope with fairly easily without too many issues. Engineering Bay on the bottom corner there. The dev just going to shade up the ramp into the natural. We'll see these marines hanging out there as well. Well, sentry on the way up. Robo facility coming down. We will take a third nexus here trap. So just going to get that uh, underway. And uh, the dev just going to shade by through the natural and into the main base. 
It's going to get through here and it's going to jump onto a uh, Marine there initially. That Marine going to fight the Adept back a little bit. Have a little bit of action taking place as these Marines continue through. The Adept is going to shade once more. And a couple of Marines still just going to work their way on the Adept there. So just doing pretty well with that. Adept is going to go down. I know the Marines are going to go out down the low ground as well. Drops a Fallon to the right-hand side. Plus one attack. Stimpak coming through. Marauder and Marine production continuing along as well now. And obviously bringing that Marauder Marine count up and running here. So again, that into play. I'm just going to be seeing our uh, setup continuing, guys. Really do have a pretty chilled uh, start at the moment. The server is going to come down the bottom left-hand corner, so it's going to have a look to see a bit of what's going on as well. See if it can get up to anything too interesting here. Factory is down, and there's the third CC moving in from Clem. Obviously, you can see the worker count is pretty much even, which for a Terran that's not put on any pressure is fantastic, and that's just because of the greed of that 3CC. And that's why Clem hasn't put on any pressure, because he's just had the super fast 3CC anyway. He'll lose a few SCVs now, and that will push Trap into a bit of a lead. Clem getting a little greedy, putting those initial uh, SCVs down to the low ground a little bit too soon. Just going to see our Bioforce continuing forward. These Storks will continue to kite back. Marauders are going to continue to chase those Stalkers down, and, well, this is going to be the first real push of Clem, who has got a plus one attack upgrade, an army lead. The double Immortal, though, is pretty much going to say no -uh to any of this really being too successful, huh? I mean, two Immortals are going to shred Marauders, and obviously if those Marauders die quickly, the Marines are all that's left, and they don't usually do great. Clem threatens the load up and maybe thinking about going into the main, but unloads straight away. So obviously doesn't think it's a good idea, and is kind of content for now, I'd imagine, just kind of continue along. Combat shield isn't done just yet either, so that's something you'll want to continue toward. And the trap is going to once again play straight into that storm upgrade. So storm upgrade going to be the, the first choice here initially. Marine and Marauders will move forward, and they're going to go in after this Zealot, which is going to get taken down, so the Zealot will fall. Bomb still coming through. Just going to see this Bioforce still on the way in. And a couple of Immortals just uh, sent themselves up over on that right-hand side. A few of these Zelds in the upper right corner. So looking to move around a little bit and figure out what they want to do. As the Bioforce is having a thing about coming down this ramp. Not going to make it down there. Those few Force Fields are going to come in. And we've seen a couple of Zelds still out to the very far left-hand side. So they're going to come through, and SCV is going to get swiped away at as Marine Marauder chases up. And still not really seeing fights, right? Obviously, now Trap has got that Storm play. Clan is going to want to be careful. I mean, the thing about this map is it's very one-dimensional in a lot of the attacking game. You know, it's very much so you come through the bottom side of the map, you push through this direction, and that's pretty much all you've got going for yourself a lot of the time. So... Something of a factor there. As the storm comes down, the bio army will take a few shots initially. And a little bit of back and forth continuing. We'll see a sentry going down as well. Archon in a little bit of trouble, perhaps. So we see another storm dropping in. The bio army still pressing forward. And this Archon still taking hits. Another storm. I mean, just chipping away at a few marines here and there. We'll make it so there's enough zealots to just overwhelm that force eventually. And it does feel like this game, Clem is just not able to get the, you know, aggression and the momentum and the, you know, the damage here, there, and everywhere going that he's been able to find in the uh, previous games. And a lot of that, I think, does have to do just with the layout of this map. And only really having, again, that major attack path through the south, and then not much else. He will now have a gold base coming up from Trap to Harass, though, and that's going to give him new options in terms of how and where and when he can attack. So... Keep our eyes on that. That gold base should be somewhat substantial. I'd be surprised if uh, nothing really came of it. So definitely looking at that as something of a factor here. As you do otherwise just see the bio army 
moving its way around up the top side, and the few Zelds are going to go charging forward. They're going to try and jump on the Siege Tank. Siege Tank gets taken down. These Zelds now taking extra damage, and... Well, only a little bit of bio force here. Continue to chase the Zelds down as well. So Zelds getting pushed out on the left-hand side. They are going to get cleaned up. They will fall as the Medivacs load up again, and we'll move through the south side. So now we will actually go into this main base with a drop. So Clem waited patiently before, you know, going for his first drop of this game. There's a high temple here, and it will have a good storm available. Clem just immediately lifts up. He doesn't want anything to do with this. He says, okay, trap, good defense. It's enough for me. You've convinced me I should back it up. Clem does have big supply lead, but it's creating a fight with this. Trap will see this army with the Hallucinated Phoenix. His own army was moving out on the map up to the north. Clem will see this now. Disruptors will grab just a handful of units to begin with. Stemming forward, the couple of disruptors will take a few shots of damage. One disruptor goes down. The Archon is so low, and now it does go down. Splits from that storm. Nice split. Well handled, and just going to be seeing Trap working his way down the bottom side here. That's going to continue to fight. High damage coming from the right side. Clem needs to do something about these incoming storms. No EMP. Actually, that storm just went off before the High Templar died. I was thinking, was it going to do anything? Man, Trap's army is disappearing. I think the Freaks might just be dead in this tournament, guys, because if Clem wins this map, it is over. This series is done. The Zealots are holding on for Trap right now. The tanks, I believe, cleaned up. There's one left over here, and it's still alive. Firing on these couple of Zealots. It did. <laughs> Those tanks had the Immortals on top of them, and that was the issue. As another Disruptor goes down, Clem continuing to make his way over and through this right-hand side. He's going for this next Disruptor shot. He's going to get it. Big pick off there. We're going to turn around. I believe that's the Prism that went down. I mean, there's no storms left, and that's one of the main things that was stopping Clem from pushing in and attacking. Clem looking for a 3-0 over Trap. What a way to set the tone for Team Liquid in these playoffs, and Clem showing that, hey, I mean business. A lot of people have been talking about Clem slumping, not playing as well lately. Well, a 3-0 over Trap would suggest freaking otherwise. And the ace player for the Freaks, looking like he's going to go down without winning a map in these playoffs. Once again, looking as though we're going to have a first round exit for the Afrika Freaks in the playoffs of the World Team League. Disruptor shots still coming through. A couple of these disruptors now going to get shot down as well. As we are going to see another disruptor shot down, another one falls, and this is just going to be too much. Clem has continued on through here. His army is looking fantastic. It's looking beautiful. It's looking like with reinforcements it should be enough. He continues to get into winning position in this map number one. And again, because it's the last life of the Freaks, it means it will be the series in favor of Liquid, because they would, even if, you know, they played map two and, and Trap won that map, Liquid will still have one life left, while the Freaks would have zero lives, and that hence would end the series. So we do end this series at a 1-0 here for Clem. And uh, Trap types out, GG! The Freaks tap out, and Team Liquid will make it through the first round, Clem! 3-0 over Trap. Wow. The Freaks will take a loss once again in the first round of playoffs.